りない Source: Kuba won't let me be invisible. Our story starts with a high school student, Junta Shiraishi, sharing his experience as an invisible person. It's not that he has the superpower of invisibility, he just seems to go unnoticed by most people. Even his commencement picture with his class had his picture pasted despite his presence in the photo. In Haruka North High School, his small professor is looking for him in class, but does not notice him until he taps his professor's shoulder. He thanked the professor for delivering the lecture notes to him. His professor seemed to have missed him. Junta feels he is like the air, as his presence can hardly be noticed. A classmate notices him, but others seem to not see him. He sits and starts using Google, yes, that's right, Google, not Google, to search about being an invisible person. Nagi Sakubo says, Morning Shiraishi. She is the only one who can notice his presence. She spots his search query on his phone and decides to take a picture of it. Much to the dismay of Tunta, he begs her to delete it, but she refuses. It turns out that Kubo is an excellent student and athlete. Shiraishi wonders how they are friends. Kubo asks him how invisible he really is. She asks him to stand on his chair to test his invisibility. At first, he refuses. Kubo puffs her cheeks and tries to be cute to let him stand on his chair. When this does not work, she decides to blackmail him with the photo she just took. He slowly works up the courage to stand in his seat. He does a ballet pose with his leg up in the air. His professor notices him and tells him to sit down. The entire class turns and sees him in his ridiculous pose. This makes Kubo giggle as Shiraishi seats down on his chair shaking at the fact the teacher noticed him even without turning. After class, Kubo makes him realize that for today he was the protagonist in the class. He points out that Kubo was therefore the antagonist. She moves closer to him and asks him to call her the heroine instead. He does not and she leaves him for another class but not before poking his cheek. After class, the girls with Kubo talk about how they spotted Shiraishi twice today. There was a rumor saying that finding Shiraishi brings bountiful good luck as he is harder to find than a four-leaf clover. Sightings of him are as rare as Tsuchinoko or Kappa. Tsuchinoko and Kappa are mythical creatures in Japanese folklore for those not following Japanese anime much. They also note how Shiraishi had never missed a single class in middle school, but they had thought he'd never attended any class. This makes Cuba wonder why she can always easily spot him. Even at home, Shiraishi's arrival goes unnoticed by his mother. He goes into his room and starts reading his manga, which is one of his pleasures in his invisible life. The next day, Kubo approaches Shiraishi with a lot of negative energy. Kubo, as usual, is clueless about why this is. Being a typical girl, she does not tell him directly what he did wrong. This reminds me of a story about a girlfriend who always thinks his boyfriend can read her mind and know what he did wrong. Hint, men do not know what they did wrong, you have to spell it out for them. Shiraishi makes the classic mistake of asking what he did wrong, making Kubo even more exasperated. He offers him milk as calcium is good when one is angry. She calms down and asks him to try to recall this day. He does so and does not notice Kubo greeting him good morning, and instead thought she greeted someone else. Still clueless about what he did wrong, just like any other man in the world, he agrees to a game Kubo offers. She sits on his lap to see if his invisibility works. Nobody notices this, but Shiraishi becomes nervous. He starts narrating how any other man would get enamored by Kubo's sweet scent and the softness of her skin. But his brain is jammed completely and offers no reaction. She squeezes his cheeks and whispers in his ear. This makes him run off. Kubo wonders if she went too far. Shiraishi realizes that Kubo has played him like a fiddle and wonders why she did it. She finds him under the window and tells him, won't it ruin the fun if I give you the answer right now? After class, Shiraishi talks to the professor just to make sure he knows he is present. As he is never called into class, Kubo devises a way to make him participate in class. She volunteers for him and even helps him get the right answer in class. He is praised by the professor and sits down. Although shaken by the experience, Kubo notes he seems to be happy. She tells him he helped him as someday he may know the answer and help her as she did today. Shiraishi thinks it's impossible as she is a lot smarter than him being third place overall while he is 105th place. 
During the break, Kubo tries to ask him to add her to the messaging app ping, but is interrupted by her friends. He runs off and goes home. He is happily expecting the release of the new manga volume he has been waiting for. The next day at the Rake Flower Garden, Kubo finds Shiryashi sitting on a bench. She uses this opportunity to take a picture of him, but even her phone does not focus on him. She is undeterred and takes several poses for a selfie until the camera focuses on both of them. She also asks for his number so she can send the picture. She successfully gets his number and leaves him. She secretly acknowledges her satisfaction at the turn of events. That night, she sends a message to him. This shocks him as he has no experience with chatting with classmates. He takes a while to respond but is able to do so. Kubo's sister notes she is happy and wonders what has happened for her to have such a cute look on her face. As she contemplates what tricks she can play on Kubo, she happily stares at the response Shirei she gave. I see. The next day in school, Kubo is struggling to stay awake. He thinks he can get away with a nap, especially with his near-invisible ability. He glances at Kubo and sees she is asleep. She awakens a bit and greets him good morning before falling back to sleep. The next class was gym so Shirei she had to run, but with his invisibility problem he has to shout to remind his partner that he had crossed the finish line otherwise, his time would not be recorded. After he pants as he walks the hallway physically exhausted from the effort of running. Kubo comes and sees they too have finished gym class. Shiraishi smells the flowery scent of Kubo and moves away as he thinks he probably stinks. Kubo moves in closers and smells him telling him it did not bother her. This makes Shiraishi panic and moves further away. Now if a girl smells you after gym class and it does not bother her you gotta wake up and realize something is up. Kubo gets a body white for him and he thanks her for her thoughtfulness. She comments, now we smell the same. Shiraishi is shaken by this statement but she leaves smiling mischievously at him as she does. In the changing room, Kubo cannot help smiling at the thought of Shiraishi and her having the same scent. Her friends notice and tease her about it. They also notice how she does not like to share her body wipe with them today and realize this might have something to do with her cheery mood. At home, Shiraishi is excited again by the release of the latest volume of Sword X Magic Manga. At the bookstore, he has difficulty getting the automatic door open for him. Kubo spots this and helps him out. Shirashi explains that most automatic doors do not open for him on the first try, but today the doors seem to totally ignore him. He shows Kubo the manga he wanted to buy, and she notices a different side of him all hyped up and cheerful. She decides to also read the manga series. Unfortunately, the bookstore does not carry the first volume. She asks Shirashi to lend her the first volume. He hesitantly agrees. As they leave, Kubo notices that they are headed in the same direction and suggests they go to his house so she can borrow the manga. Shiraishi lends her the first three volumes and promises to lend her more if she likes them. Kubo happily accepts. She tells him that she lives just five minutes away from his place. She asks what time he leaves for school and notes how he leaves earlier than her. She thanks him for the manga. As she walks away, she reminds herself to leave a little earlier for school the next day. At 6.30 a.m., Kubo wakes up and prepares to go to school. She feels she is trying too hard but still uses her sister's hair mist. Her sister notices her earlier than usual preparations and asks her if there is anything happening in school. When Kubo does not share anything, she points out how she looks cute and even used her expensive hair mist. She deduces that she has a crush on some boy. Kubo denies this and tries running out the door. Her sister teases her that she usually leaves 10 minutes later, and since there was nothing special in school, why was she in a rush? Kubo's face tells her sister all she needs to know and laughs at the situation, but still wishes her luck. She waits for Shiraishi in the corner and jumps out as he passes by. Kubo realizes Shiraishi does not notice anything. Meanwhile, Shiraishi also hesitates and realizes he has not walked with any of his classmates to school. Kubo invites him to sit on a bench to chat a bit. Kubo's friend's catch arrives, and they are surprised at Kubo's earlier arrival. They also get shocked when Kubo points out she is with Shiraishi. It turns out the bench is the meet-up place for Kubo and her friends, Hazuki and Tama. He decides to stand up and go ahead to school. There he reflects on how no one notices him or is aware of his existence. 
As he walks back home, a woman does not notice him so he avoids her but gets splashed. By the car passing by, he realizes how invisible he is but is also glad that he is. Kubo comes from behind and greets him. He is once again surprised at her ability to find him. She tells him she saw what happened and he must get home to shower as soon as possible. They walk home with Shiraishi thinking how unlucky he was being covered with mud and found by Kubo. He gets home and realizes he left his keys. As his mom would be coming back in two hours, he decides to go wash in the park. Kubo suggests he go to her place as it's closer and washing in the park may be too cold. They arrive at her place and she tells him that no one is home. She quickly covers up her laundry and shows Shiraishi the bathroom. She gets him some change of clothes but is embarrassed at the prospect of Shiraishi seeing her bra in the laundry. She prepares him fresh towels and a tracksuit. She also cleans up his dirty laundry. Kubo finishes showering and changes. He finds her waiting outside the room. He thanked her for everything. He leaves after drying his hair. He leaves Kubo and thinks about how anyone can be hyper aware after something like that and blushes. Okay, my boy, you need to wake up and smell the flowers. Or better yet, someone grabs a bat and wakes him up. He is definitely trying to let the girl work so hard. The next day, Shiraishi runs into Kubo and returns the tracksuit. She asks him how tall he is and he shares he is 5 foot 4. She smiles and said she is 5 foot 3. She steps up the stairs and shares that the difference of 6 inches is similar to her height now. She tells him 6 inches is the ideal height difference between couples. He notes that the man should be taller. She pats him on the head while telling him she does not mind. Her closeness makes Shiraishi nervous. She jumps down the stairs and says she prefers their height difference to be 6 inches. If that was not a hint, you have to have been born yesterday if you did not get that one. She says she is kidding and leaves him more confused than ever. In class, Shiraishi ponders about the fact that the semester is about to end. The professor asks the class to submit their answer sheets and the class breaths a collective sigh of relief. Kubo turns to Shiraishi and asks him why he is in such a rush. He tells her he has plans and leaves. A woman walks past the park and finds a boy playing in the snow. She approaches him and asks who he is with. Shiraishi tells her he is there with the boy. This shocks the woman as he was just beside the boy and she did not see him. He was watching his younger brother play in the snow, but the woman swears she did not see him. He thanks the woman and then apologizes to Sita. He returns to playing with the snow. Shiraishi thinks about his promise to watch over Sita as he plays in the snow, but hates the fact people do not see him and thinks he is playing by himself. Sita gives him a snowball as he continues to play. Kubo comes and greets Shiraishi. She realizes that he had to be a big brother today and play with Sita. Shiraishi tells Sita to greet Kubo and he does. Kubo notices Sita looking at the hot chocolate drink she is holding. He tells Shiraishi he likes to drink it. Kubo obliges and gives him the drink. He happily drinks it and then offers some to Kubo. She takes a sip and gives it back to Sita. He then offers the drink to Shiraishi, but he initially refuses, probably thinking of an indirect kiss at this moment. But his refusal is met with the cute wide-eyed look of Sita and Kubo also convinces him. Shiraishi pretends to drink and Sita happily leaves them. Left alone, Kubo confronts Shiraishi about not drinking and thinking of an indirect kiss. He avoids the topic and moves reasoning he needs to warm up. As he walks away, Kubo smiles as she tells him, if you're cold, it's more puzzling that you didn't drink any. Back in his room, Shiraishi is reading Monarchy, another manga. He leaves the house to get the Monarchy bonus poster included in the latest release of a weekly magazine. He could have bought it in the convenience store, but since the cover of the magazine has photos of women in a bikini, he was hesitant to purchase it there. For someone with the ability to mimic air, he is putting too much thought into the magazine cover. He cannot get to the magazine as it is blocked by other customers who do not notice him and do not give him enough space to get it. He waits until they leave and proceeds to get the magazine. Noting another magazine out of place, he decides to return it properly. He discovers it to be an adult magazine. He realizes that since nobody usually notices him, he should peek especially with the cover model looking like Kubo. The shop attendant approaches him and tells him he is too you to be holding the adult magazine. 
Of all the times for his invisibility not working, this is the worst time for it. He reasons he was putting it back, as he is buying a manga. She agrees with him but also tells him she thought he got curious and wanted to see. He suddenly realizes that a store attendant talking to him is strange and the only one who easily spots him is Kubo. He looks at the name tag and sees the attendant to be Kubo's elder sister. He buys the manga and decides not to go to the bookstore for a while. Kubo's sister finds the ID card that he dropped on the floor. When she gets home, she asks Kubo to give back the ID. Kubo sees it's Shureishi's and her sister tells her he was looking at porn. This crushes her especially when her sister notes the cover girl had large jugs. The next day, she shows the ID to Shiraishi and gives him a hard time getting it. She asks him if he likes big melons. This startles him and wonders if Kubo was in the bookstore. He finally puts two and two together that the store attendant was Kubo's sister. He tries clearing it up, but she slaps the ID card on his face. She leaves and calls him a perv. At home, Kubo and her sister talk about their Christmas plans. In school the next day, Shiraishi notices his classmates once again looking for him. Kubo pokes his cheek and tells him to go to the staff room as their teacher wants to talk to him. He leaves and Kubo overhears a girl talking about watching the Christmas lights with his boyfriend. Kubo comes back and she reminds him of their promise to hang out. Having no plans, he agrees to go. She invites him to meet the next Saturday in front of the train station at 1 p.m. He looks at the calendar and realizes it's Christmas Day on that Saturday. On Christmas Day, he arrives 30 minutes earlier due to his nervousness. Due to the crowds, he has a hard time navigating as most people do not see him in their field of vision. He nearly avoids getting sat on by a couple. At 12.50, Kubo arrives and asks if this could be considered him waiting for her. He lies and tells him he just got there. She holds his hands and notes they are cold. She asks how long he had waited. He admits he waited for about 20 minutes. She gives him a Christmas present as she thought they might exchange gifts. She tells him to buy her a gift. He scores the department store for a gift he has not idea about. He hurries as he does not want Kubo to get cold. He arrives late for the 15 minutes he was given to buy the gift. He gets her winter mitts to warm her hands and he was late as he had a hard time choosing the color. Kubo silently listens and tells him ultimately she loved his gift. She tells him that she now regrets giving her his gift and wants to buy a new one. Her gift turns out to be a bright yellow shirt with the writing main character to help him stand out. He tells her he did not expect to get anything and that receiving a gift makes him happy already. They leave together. Spring arrives and Sita is enjoying watching anime at home with Shirashi. He mimics the hero's transformation and keeps on repeating the gestures, long enough for even Shirashi to memorize the moves. Their mom tells him to bring Sita to the park as he has been watching too much TV. They both go and in the emptiness of the park, Shirashi decides to teach Sita the right moves from the anime to transform. He is unaware of Kubo taking a video of him doing the transformation actions, mimicking the anime show. Sita asks him to do it one more time, but he does not as he is already embarrassed when he sees Kubo taking a video. In school, Shiraishi realizes he has put on mismatched pair of socks, but he is confident in his invisibility that no one will notice. He got through gym class without anyone noticing. He spots Kubo and notices something different but cannot put his finger on it. After class, teacher asks Kubo to put up the new printouts. She asks for help from Shiraishi. He gets conscious of his socks when helping her out. She tells him not to be embarrassed about his socks. She gets up on the chair to straighten the printout, and Shiraishi finally figures out she wore tights to school that day. He unconsciously blurts out, tights. Kubo sits and tells him he noticed her wearing tights. She explains that her socks were still wet, and so she used tights. She asks him if he was staring at her legs and calls her a dirty boy. He defends himself saying he noticed something different about her and was wondering the entire day. She smiles and said she caught him staring at her the entire day. She asks him if she has tried some of the automated hot cup dispensing machines in the convenience store. He tells her yes and she excitedly jumps down the chair and lands so close to him. They proceed to the store and she tries choosing a drink. Shirashi thinks that if it were him and Sita, they would order different drinks and just taste each other's drink. Seemingly reading his mind, 
Kubo suggests they just order two drinks and just let each other share the drinks. Shiraishi declines and just decides to buy a meat bun. She asks him to be her guardian angel. As it is her first time, she hesitates regarding the size of her drink. Shiraishi saves her from embarrassment by advising her to get regular. He also reminds her to put the cup on before pushing the button to fill the drink. They head home and Kubo is happy with her drink. She offers him to taste her drink. He again refuses and says he has his meat bun. She asks for a taste. Shiraishi wants to break off a piece to give to her, but she decides to take a bite off his meat bun instead. Oh, the jokes I can mine from that phrase. She thanks him and reminds him to eat his meat bun while it's still warm. She leaves Shiraishi in a daze. Two ladies bump into him and he drops the meat bun. It's Valentine's Day and as most anime fans know in Japan, girls give guys chocolates and sometimes confess their love. To receive chocolates, guys try to be nice to girls, others start freaking out while others pray. In school, Shiraishi notices how the guys are all edgy. He remembers in elementary when the teacher passed out chocolates on Valentine's Day and omitted to give him one. He finds a heart-shaped chocolate under his desk. This makes him pause, I mean really pause. He looks around and feels someone forgot their sweets under his desk, not realizing that it is for him. He thinks that it is only Kubo that he speaks to, but it cannot be from her. He slams his head on the desk and Kubo worriedly goes to him. Her presence shocks him as he did not notice him. He contemplates asking her if the cookie was from her but decides to change the topic. Still not believing the chocolate was for him, he decides to let it be. Kubo asks him if someone has given him chocolates. He denies it and Kubo smiles. This makes him wonder as she seems happy about his response. She notices the sweets under his desk. He asks her if she knows anything about it. She responds positively and says someone had put a lot of effort into it so he should enjoy it. He tells her, it might not be for him. Kubo assures him that it is meant for him. She leaves him and he wonders who would give him chocolates as Kubo blushes outside the classroom. The day before Valentine's, Kubo attempted to bake sweets to the horror of her sister. It turns out Kubo only buys ready-made chocolates and even burns the pancakes she cooks. She also cannot distinguish between cabbage and lettuce. Kubo uses a recipe she finds online but it turns out burnt. Her sister just tells her to buy the ready-made ones, but Kubo insists on trying again. Her sister decides to make cookies and teaches Kubo how to make them. Kubo's cookies do not turn out as nice but upon tasting them, her sister says they are much better than hers, as Kubo made them with lots of love. Not all cookies were deformed, one came out looking great. Kubo thanks her sister but she starts teasing her again. She asks Kubo whom she is giving the heart-shaped cookie. Kubo tells her to mind her own business. The next day starts with everyone having lunch at the school. MC explains that he enjoys lunch breaks, though his invisibleness does cause him inconveniences in his daily life, so MC can enjoy his lunch at his favorite spot as no one can see him. He is quite confused as he can't decide where to have his lunch today. He has eaten lunch at almost every classroom in the past. Therefore, MC finally decides to step outside and have his lunch there as the weather looks quite calm. He claims lunch breaks as a mini-adventure. Since when did deciding a place to sit become an adventure? Finally, MC decides on a place to sit and enjoy his lunch. He is about to begin his lunch but that's where Kubo arrives. So MC seems surprised to see Kubo-san, he even asks her why she is here. To which Kubo-san explains that she was searching for the MC so they can have lunch together. Then Kubo sits next to MC. MC is still in shock because Kubo normally spends her lunch break with her friends, though Kubo replies and says that she's here because her friends, Tama and Hazuki, are attending a meeting right now. Here we thought that she ditched her friend for our MC. She starts to eat her lunch while MC just sits there awkwardly. Seconds later, MC opens his lunch. Kubo starts to stare at MC's food as it waters her mouth. As Kubo is staring at MC's lunch like a homeless person, MC is left with no option but to offer her to taste his lunch. Without even flinching, Kubo accepts his offer, but she asks MC to exchange rolled omelets. Then Kubo reaches her hand to feed the rolled omelet to MC, but MC simply snatches the omelet from Kubo's hand. As a fair trade, MC hands Kubo his omelet roll. 
Kubo immediately takes a bite as she holds MC's hand, while MC seems to be zoned out. I bet no girl ever touched him. Kubo enjoys the omelette roll from MC's lunch, she finds it quite delicious. Same goes for the MC. Then Kubo reveals that she made those omelette rolls. It makes MC impressed by Kubo's cooking skills. She is already a wifey material. Kubo tells MC that she'll cook more so they can have more lunch breaks together as she sits in front of him. So MC starts to hesitate as he sees Kubo staring right at him. Turns out she had her eyes on the MC's lunch this whole moment as she steals an octopus from his lunchbox and eats it. As the MC continues his lunch, Kubo just sits there and watches him eating peacefully. While her lunch is getting cold. Later, after school time ends, Kubo goes to a cafe with her friends. Both of the girls start to compliment Kubo for her beauty and ask her if she has a crush. Kubo doesn't reply to her question as she doesn't have any crush yet. Kubo's friend Tamao reveals that her first crush was none other than her dad. Not sure where this is leading, Hazuki asks Kubo if she's interested in anyone. Though Kubo still looks confused, she explains to her what being interested in someone means. Without a second thought, MC appears in Kubo's mind. The girls are shocked to hear his name. So, Tamao looks at Kubo in a disappointed manner, as she claims MC to be a mid-guy who isn't athletic or hot. Where's the lie? Kubo then immediately shushes Tamao. Then Kubo defends MC, stating that if you don't know MC properly then you shouldn't be the one to judge. Hazuki asks Kubo for MC's strong points which attracts Kubo towards MC. Kubo doesn't answer her question as she tends to keep it a secret while blushing. Tamao and Hazuki immediately figure out that Kubo has fallen in love with MC, but they tend to keep it a secret from Kubo so she may figure out her feelings by herself. It is true that a woman only understands another woman. The next day, MC wakes up way early in the morning and decides to leave for school early. As he arrives at the school he realizes that he's the first one to enter. MC is still confident that no one will notice him even though he's the first person to arrive at the school. As MC enters the class he notices that Kubo arrived earlier in the classroom. Then Kubo shares her hands with MC as they sit together and listen to music. She asks the MC to play his favorite song as she's interested to know his music taste. After insisting, MC finally agrees and plays his favorite song, which is an anime opening. Then it cuts to Kubo watching an anime at her home. It's the same anime whose opening MC played. Kubo's sister Akina was also surprised to see her cute sister watching an anime. In the meantime, MC gets curious as he has no idea who was the person who gifted him chocolates on White Day. MC decides to give that person a return gift for their generosity. So the next day he brings a chocolate box to the school. Then MC calls Kubo's son and hands her the chocolate. At first she gets happy, but later the MC tells her to hand this gift to the person who gifted the MC. Kubo starts to feel happy because it is none other than herself who gave him the gift. At this point, wasn't it obvious? Kubo then jokingly says to MC to ask her out. And so, MC starts to panic so Kubo stops him before he could get a heart attack. MC then asks Kubo to reveal the name of the person who gave him the gift. This kid is so dumb. She hints at him by saying maybe it's me and starts to walk towards the class. At this point, Kubo blames MC and says if he still doesn't get it, then it's his fault. As MC is sitting in the classroom, everyone seems to be engaging with their friends while the MC is sitting alone. MC realizes that it would take multiple takes before someone would actually notice his existence. That's when Kubo's son walks in front of him and starts to stare at him. The MC feels wholesome to the fact that she always manages to notice him. That's where Tamao rushes towards Kubo as she seems to be worried. She explains that she isn't able to notice the MC. He's literally sitting in front of her. Then Tamao asks Kubo if she saw him anywhere. So Kubo immediately replies to her and says that she hasn't seen the MC at all. At this point, the MC feels a little bit sad because even Kubo wasn't able to notice him. That's when he realizes that Kubo did stare at him a moment ago. Turns out she lied to Tamao. Was it a prank or jealousy? Then Kubo pats MC as she notices his hair isn't done well. That makes MC tremble and he runs off to the bathroom to do his hair. 
Meanwhile, Kubo begins laughing while blushing because it's the first time she's seen him with bed hair. Later, MC explains that it gets hard for him to walk outside. Whenever he drops something, people manage to find that stuff, but they fail to notice MC. Poor MC even lost his student card like that. As MC is walking on the street, he accidentally drops his handkerchief. Though this time a girl notices the handkerchief and returns it to MC. He feels surprised as people are starting to notice him a little bit now. Though MC feels like he has seen someone similar before. That's when Akina walks towards the kid. She immediately recognizes MC as the boy who was reading a porno magazine at the bookstore. So Akina asks MC if he got his ID back from Nadhisa. He gets shocked and says that Kubo's son mentioned that her sister was the one to find his ID. That's where MC realizes that Akina is actually Nahisa's big sister, and that kid is their cousin Saki Kubo. That's why MC had his doubts that Saki did resemble someone as she looked similar to Kubo's son. Then MC introduces himself awkwardly. I mean Akina remembers him as the perverted boy who read porno magazines. Akina reveals that Nahisa did look like Saki when she was in middle school. She starts to trick MC as she keeps resembling Saki to Nagisa. As the MC calls Saki cute, Akina teases him by saying just like Nagisa. At this point, MC starts to feel embarrassed. Akina then shows Nagisa's picture when she was in middle school. Saki asks MC if she'll be as cute as Nagisa. MC starts to hesitate and says that she might look as cute as Nagisa. Then Akina decides to reward MC for cheering up Saki. She asks for the MC's number so she can send him the middle school photo of Nadhisa. If MC spends another minute with the cunning Akina, he'd even spill his feelings. Later Kubo welcomes her sister and cousin back home. Then Akina tells Kubo that they met MC today and Kubo starts to get curious. Akina tells Kubo that she exchanged numbers with MC. Akina then smartly tricks Kubo. She asks Kubo to invite him to their house again. Akina doesn't know that MC did visit their house before, so Kubo starts to tremble and asks Akina how she knows that. That shocks Akina because now it was confirmed. Later that night, MC is having dinner with his family. His mother seems very calm as she starts to ask him how his school is going, but that's when she switches to a scary mother and tells MC that if his grades went down, she'll ground him from video games. Anyways, the next day at school, the teacher announces that their exams are about to start next week. At this point, everyone is doing group study while MC is sitting alone at the library. That's where Kubo once again joins him. So Kubo starts to help MC in studying as she resolves all his confusion. MC gets surprised because he was expecting Kubo to make fun of his dumbness. Therefore, MC feels joy because it is his first time experiencing group study. He looks forward to studying tomorrow too with Kubo. Well, the next day MC wakes up with a high fever. He isn't able to attend school for the first time. Kubo seems to feel down as she notices that MC didn't come to school today. So Kubo can't decide what to message him, so she ends up asking him if he's coming to school tomorrow. As the MC checks his phone, Sita walks into the room and starts to jump on MC. He accidentally touches MC's phone and a sticker gets sent to Kubo which says, Miss you. At this point, Kubo's heart stops for a second, but MC immediately clarifies to her that it is Sita. In return, Kobu sends him a sticker that reads, Lonely without you, but she later blames it on her sister. As Kobu is walking to her home, she receives a secret message from Akina. It cuts to the next day where MC seems to arrive late at school. So MC decides to wait outside the class till the period gets over. That's when Cuba walks out of the classroom. She seems unwell as she falls onto MC as Cuba starts to walk towards the nurse's office in dizziness. So MC decides to accompany her to the nurse's office. Cuba then leans onto MC's shoulder and so they start to walk while blushing. Not gonna lie, they look cute. It appears that no one is at the nurse's office, so MC leans Kubo to the nurse's bed. Kubo holds MC's hand and falls asleep. Moments later, the nurse arrives and so the MC walks out. Today, MC starts to feel like the main character for the first time. As the third semester is about to end, the MC is walking into the school. He feels relieved that he managed to get a good score on the final examination. 
Now he can play as many video games as he wants. It's raining outside and MC is feeling calm. That's when Cuba walks in and asks MC the reason he is happy. He thanks Cubo's son for tutoring him. MC believes that he managed to survive finals because of Cubo. Though MC feels quite sad, he explains that they might get separated into different sections as the new school year starts. Both of them stare at the raindrops and realize that everything might end. They're just changing sections, I mean they can meet after school. Moments later as they are about to leave, MC reveals that he didn't bring an umbrella. So Cubo finds that opportunity perfect to try an experiment. Cubo asks MC to stand with her under her umbrella in the street. Cubo wants to check if people would notice MC there or not. MC feels a little bit uncomfortable, because he has a feeling that he'll easily get spotted, though he never tried such experiments before. Anyways, Cubo gets excited, well mainly because she's relieved to know that this is MC's first time standing with a girl. So MC instantly refuses to try this experiment with Cubo, she hands him the umbrella and starts to run away. As Cubo is walking in the rain, MC starts to feel bad. Seconds later he eventually joins Cubo in Alas, and the experiment begins. The way Cubo used the emotional blackmail card to MC, there's no doubt that she's the sister of Akina. He wonders, even if it's an experiment, they are walking like a couple while touching each other's shoulders. So MC decides to walk on a street that's usually empty. Even Cubo doesn't mind changing routes as she has no idea about what is going on inside MC's mind. While MC feels relieved as they walk on an empty street, Cubo feels disappointed that they didn't encounter anyone. At this point, their experiment is also considered a failure because they are about to reach home. So Cubo asks MC if he intentionally took the empty street so they could spend some alone time together. She's partially right and partially wrong. Therefore, MC feels embarrassed because that wasn't his intention. Kubo doesn't mind at all. She even asks MC to do this again. As Kubo and MC are walking, Akina spots them from behind. Surprisingly, she doesn't bother them and minds her own business. And so, Puba walks MC to his home. MC's mother notices that he isn't wet at all even though MC has no umbrella with him. On the other hand, Kubo reaches home and gets welcomed by Akina. Akina doesn't tease Kubo at all, which is quite surprising. Akina tells Kubo that they'll be hanging out with Saki on Saturday. The next day, MC notices Saki waking up at the grocery store. Saki seems to struggle while carrying those groceries. MC reaches out to Saki and offers her help. While Saki stands there silently, she then neglects MC's offer. Saki believes that if she manages to reach home with such heavy groceries, she'll receive praise from Kubo. All that effort for praise. Anyways, MC notices that her hands are starting to turn red due to carrying those weights. He explains to Saki that he'll tell Kubo that Saki carries all that stuff if she lets MC help her. She reveals that she bought all these groceries because she learned to make meat and potato stew. Kubo did mention that her favorite dish was meat and stew. Though Saki does mention that Kubo's cooking skills are somewhat dubious, which surprises MC. As MC and Saki are walking, Saki asks MC about his relationship with Kubo. So MC claims that they are just classmates, not even close friends, for some unknown reason that satisfies Saki. Anyways, Kubo rushes towards Saki, she is worried about her. Then Saki tells Kubo that MC doesn't know Kubo's first name, to which Kubo asks MC to say her first name. At first, MC hesitates but he eventually says her first name which is Nagisa. Kubo starts to feel delighted and tells Saki about MC's first name which is Tumta. And so MC and Kubo part ways. Later, everyone in the class finally notices MC's existence as he sneezes. Their MC is getting bored in the class, so he starts to disassemble a pen. He explains that his favorite part of the pen is the spring but that's where it falls off. As the MC turns to search for the spring, he notices that Kubo is staring at him creepily. Kubo asks him the reason he disassembled the pen. MC explains that he was just curious and bored. Though MC's pen gets wasted, now that he lost the spring. So Kubo gives MC a pen which delights him, and so MC notices that Kubo has the same designed pen. 
I wouldn't be surprised if Kubo is the one to hide the spring. It's their last day of the class before they switch. So Kudo, Tamo, and Hazuki decide to have a sleepover. Finally, we'll be able to see what girls do on a sleepover. There, Tamo expresses joy because this time she only managed to fail one subject, which is like a record for her in a good way. The girls even pat Tamo as a reward. After having snacks, as the girls are setting up the bed, Hazuki mentions that they might switch classes as school starts. It makes Tamo cry because she wants to spend more time together, which saddens Kubo too, because she starts to think of MC. Anyways, Kubo also reveals that she got the second position in the school, and moments later they all fall asleep and hope to stay together in the future. MC is lazing around the house when his mother asks to get some things from the market. He gets up to go when his little brother Sita also wishes to go with him. They are off to do some shopping together. On the other hand, Nagisa and her sisters are also walking together when Saki wishes to cook tomorrow with her sisters. They all agree and start planning what they want to eat and do tomorrow together. Saki is pretty hyped up to do anything for her sister Nagisa. Akina asks if Nagisa is going to cook with them. She is not because she sucks at cooking as she says. Saki holds Nagisa's hands and promises to make her the best thing to eat she has ever eaten. She will do anything to make it as yummy as possible for her sister. Little sister making everything so weird. They are at the market when they are agreeing upon what to make tomorrow. Saki and Akina are deciding while Nagisa is just looking at her and when she spots MC with his little brother too. She goes to meet him. Saki notices and goes behind her as well. Akina is pretty curious as to what is so great over there that these two just left like that. Seeing MC clears everything up. MC is shopping with his little brother. Sita is pretty impressed by his big brother and how he put all the potatoes in the sale basket. Wow, so impressive Tanta. He is praising his big brother when Nagisa comes behind MC saying hello to Sita. Satya says hello back and MC is surprised to see her here. She looks very beautiful to him and he doesn't utter a single word seeing her. Sita tells Nagisa how awesome his big brother is. Saiki comes to see them as well when Sita starts blushing to see her. He goes to hide behind his brother and doesn't say hello to her. Maybe he likes her? MC asks Sita to say hello to Saki. Coming out from behind MC, Sita quietly comes up to Saki and says hello. Saying hello, Sita takes his favorite rock out of his pocket and gives it to Saki. Sita is blushing and isn't saying a word. Taking the rock, Saki thanks Sita for doing this. Saki looks at Nagisa and MC, but they are looking at something to their left. It's Akina and she is secretly watching them from behind the shelf. Akina comes out and asks if MC and Seda have any plans for tomorrow. They don't hearing this, Akina invites them to the party they are going to have tomorrow. She really wants us all to get along and play and have fun. She asks Seda if he wants to play with Saki. He looks so cute when he says yes. This little kiddo is too cute for this world. She also asks MC and he agrees to come. Seeing MC agree, Akina asks Nagisa once again if she wants to cook or not. Now she is surely going to make anything she can. The next day, Nagisa gets up early and starts to cook something. She has started without her sisters because she wants to make hamburger steak. She is doing this for MC for sure and Akina knows it as she sees her peeling the onion. Saiki comes home and asks about Nagisa. Akina lets her know that she started without them and has been peeling the onion for a while now. There is no one in left. Saki sees her struggling and puts on an apron to help her sister. She wants to make sure she makes what she wants to. Saki goes into the kitchen and asks if she wants some help. Do you have to ask that? She really does and would love it if Saki helped her. She starts teaching her how to peel an onion. She starts to explain how to peel and cut an onion. But everything is going above her head. Nagisa still tries to understand somehow and takes a knife to cut the onion. But she accidentally cuts her finger. After putting on a bandage, Saki feels regret that this is because of her. Nagisa assures her it was herself who did this and she still wants to make the steak. But Saki tells her not to because she will hurt herself again and she doesn't want to see her do that. Saki is making the hamburger steak while Nagisa is sitting quietly on the sofa when Akina comes in. She feels like Nagisa threw away the towel but Saki explains it was her who told her not to cook further. She thought she could not see her sister get hurt again so she stopped her from cooking. Nagisa looks all sad like she sinned and is getting punished for it. Akina sees the situation and tells Saki that it was Nagisa's carelessness that she hurt herself and not her fault. 
She sure does make mistakes, but she surely doesn't repeat them. She asks Saki to give her sister another chance because it is good for both of them. Nagisa comes up to Saki and asks if she can cook again because she wants to make hamburger steaks by herself. She promises to not cut her finger again though. Saki and Akina start giggling and Nagisa is curious about it. But Seki is ready to make some delicious hamburger steak with Nagisa. They power through and Seki leads Nagisa with the cooking. Nagisa is working quite hard for her first time and is really putting her heart into it. They have finally made the hamburger steaks. Salt Bay charges you a kidney and your left eye for such a steak. Akina sees both of them working together and loves seeing her little sisters getting along so well. Nagisa lets Saki take a bite of the hamburger steak and she loves it. Akina and Saki wonder why she made the hamburger steaks though. Saki feels like it was for MC but she says she was just craving these nothing else. MC and Sita are here for the picnic and everyone leaves for the picnic spot. They are walking there and the weather is fine for today. Nagisa and MC are chatting when MC's tummy gurgles. Nagisa wonders if he has eaten or not and he has not. He really wanted to eat what they had made for them. Coming to the spot they lay out the dishes and everything looks great. Akina gives Sita the first bite and he loves it. Even more after knowing that Seiki made this. Akina is enjoying this occasion with alcohol while MC just wants to eat something. He really wants to eat the hamburger steak but they are too far away from him. So he just starts with something else for now. He is about to take something else when Nagisa takes a hamburger steak and gives it to MC. He is surprised but Nagisa sees his stare at them, so she takes one and gives it to him. He thanks her and gives it a try. MC finds it very delicious and Nagisa starts blushing hearing this. Akina looks at both of them and cannot control herself. She is really drunk after chugging down a lot of beers. She gets up and sits in the middle of them. Suddenly, she starts hitting on MC and trying to give him suggestive ideas. MC cannot believe he is looking directly at Akina's big melons. Nagisa tries to stop her but she just wouldn't. Nagisa gets really angry with her and tells her that she hates this kind of harassment. She gets up and goes to get something for Akina. MC wants to go behind her but his leg just fell asleep. Taking Sita with him, MC goes behind her and Nagisa walks in front. She is really mad at something but MC doesn't know what it is. He is trying to figure it out but he just can't. Why are all the main characters so dense? Can't they figure out little things like these? He wants to make up but doesn't know what to say. Sita gets really emotional and asks his brother to go after her and make up for it. He doesn't know how to do that but still agrees seeing his little brother worry this much. MC goes to her and apologizes right away. Nagisa starts walking again saying it was even his fault. This crushes MC and Sita goes to Nagisa. Pulling her from the back, Sita asks her to make up with his big brother. Nagisa sees MC and he is just sitting down in agony. She goes to him and tells him that he doesn't have to feel bad for anything because it wasn't his fault. Everything is fine. She adds that he shouldn't worry about Akina as she was just drunk out of her mind. They start walking holding hands when Nagisa wonders if both of them are going to be in the same class or not. MC doesn't know what to say when she asks if he wants to be in the same class as her. Today classes are changing for MC as he is moving up to the second year. He is walking to the school and realizes that his class is going to change and he has even moved up a grade, but still his life is the same as before. The clerk, surprised to see him, sneezes in the crowd and people start staring at him. Everything is the same as before. He is as invisible as he was before. Not one is going to talk to him. No one is ever going to listen to him. Nothing has changed. Reaching the school, MC is waiting for the hallway to get a little less crowded so he can see where his class is on the schedule table. He sees his class and realizes that the class change is something very new for everyone. The heart races every time the class changes and you certainly take two deep breaths before entering your new class. Coming into the class, he looks at the sitting table on the board trying to find his seat when Nagisa tells him that his seat is in the full back of the classroom. Both say good morning to each other. Nagisa is as optimistic as always and is very happy to see that both of them are in the same class. They are chatting when Nagisa's friends show up and she goes to meet them. MC walks to his seat and sitting on it. He notices a bunny geometry on the table right next to his. He looks out the window when Nagisa comes up again and wants him to guess where her seat is. He surely knows it is right next to his, but makes it look like he doesn't know. This guy is pretty hard to get right. Nagisa again starts thinking about how they are going to be neighbors until graduation because there are no class changes in the third year, they are going to be right next to each other for two whole years. 
MC isn't really responding to her and is just looking out the window when Nagisa asks what he is looking at. The sky looks really beautiful and MC is just appreciating it. Nagisa also loves today's sky. MC wonders why it is that no one has ever noticed him in the class but Nagisa always comes to say good morning. She always finds him no matter what. Nagisa wishes to have a lot of fun this year when MC agrees with her. He is surprised to see himself say yes to something like this because he has never found the school to be something as fun. Nagisa notices this but ignores the feeling. MC feels like he should keep his feelings to himself or otherwise Nagisa will find him very weird. After school, Nagisa is with her friends enjoying some drinks. They are thankful that they ended up in the same class or who knows what would have happened. They asked Nagisa about MC and if he is in the same class or not. She thought they had noticed him today, but they didn't. She tells them that he is in the same class. That is when both of them say that they have never noticed him in the class. This gets Nagisa thinking about him and how he would feel about it. Going home, Akina is sitting on the sofa when she asks if MC is in her class or not. She tells her that he is and avoids any further questions she asks. The next day in the class, the teacher is recruiting students for the committees when Nagisa asks MC about his favorite one. MC seems to think that he doesn't have a say in the matter because even if he raises his hand, the teacher won't notice him. So he is okay with what is left over. This hits Nagisa. This boy is very lonely and very depressed as I feel it. Nagisa remembers that he was on the environmental committee last year, and it was because of him that the flower beds are considered among the seven wonders of the school. MC is surprised to hear that she knows about him doing that. He explains that he doesn't like that committee. It is just that when he watered the plants, he would love to see them bloom. And people always loved seeing his blooming flowers, so that was also one of the reasons he was on that committee. Everyone always thought that those flowers just bloomed on their own without anyone tending to them. How unnoticeable this person is. Nagisa is just looking at him and seeing how innocent and simple he is. It's time to get some recruits for the environmental committee when the teacher asks who wants to join. No one is raising his hands because no one really likes the things you have to do on this committee. Nagisa knows MC really wants to join but knows he won't be noticed. So she raises her hand and volunteers to join. The teacher is delighted to see her raise her hand and Nagisa tells him that MC also wants to join. Now MC and Nagisa are on the same committee. MC doesn't really know why she did it and asks her about it. Nagisa remembers how she used to see him water the plants with full focus. He loved doing all of that and thought he wanted to do it again, so she did it for him. After the class, students talk about committees when they start talking about the environmental committee. They feel like Nagisa joined it, which is why MC joined the committee. They ask a student named Sudo about it, but he has a different opinion on it. He remembers that MC was on the same committee last year, so maybe he just wanted to do it again. Even the teacher complimented his flowers. He knows all of this because he was on the same committee too last year, but his flowers didn't grow like MC's did. MC and Nagisa are hearing them talk. Nagisa knows MC just thought, wow, some actually remembered me being on that committee. Well, she was on point. Nagisa wants MC to teach him all the ins and outs of the flowering and everything related to it. Saying this, she calls him senpai, which strikes through his heart. They have a science lab in the next class, and Nagisa goes to the class. MC is behind her and wonders who is going to be in his group this year. Turns out, it is Nagisa and Sudo are his group members. Well, the coincidences are with him. The teacher asks them to take their notebooks and write down everything he is writing on the board. Sudo is sitting right next to him and suddenly makes a mistake. He needs an eraser, but he forgot his eraser at home. MC notices it and wants to help him out but he has never even talked to the guy. He looks at Nagisa and she is looking directly at him. She can read him like a book so she is now plotting something. MC has brought five erasers with him and Nagisa takes them and puts them right on the table where Sudo can see them. Sudo sees and asks why he brought five erasers. MC doesn't really have an answer and tries to say something but nothing lands right. Sudo laughs and asks if he can borrow one as he forgot his eraser at home. MC gives it to home. Suda thanks him and tells him that he was actually mean to talk to him. This catches MC off guard. Suda tells him that he was also on the environmental committee last year and always tried his best to grow his flowers but nothing happened. He wanted to talk to him and ask him about his secret, but he never managed to find him. Suda compliments his flowers and knows he is going to do great this year as well. 
NC feels like he is enjoying talking to Sudo. Walking back with Nagisa, he thanked her for doing this because it was actually the first time he enjoyed talking to someone beside her. Nagisa suddenly starts to freak out and asks him to go without her. He caught her off guard telling her that he enjoys talking to her. After school, NC is walking home when he feels like drinking something. In front of a vending machine, NC sees water and thinks it is very relatable, and it is always overlooked, just like he is. MC wants to try the new youthful lemon flavor. He is about to press that button when Nagisa comes and pushes him a little, accidentally getting water instead of lemon. He says that he really wanted the youthful lemon flavor. They start talking about youth and which flavor their youth might be. MC thinks he is like water and for lemon, you should have a life unlike his. Nagisa believes you should have friends at least. MC tells her that he doesn't have any friends. This strikes Nagisa as she thought they were friends but NC never thought about it. Learning that Nagisa and he are friends, he feels like it is something fulfilling for him at last. NC is sitting quietly in his chair when Nagisa comes up to him, asking to have a staring contest. NC doesn't know why she wants it but agrees. They start the contest and NC starts making funny faces. He thought you have to make the other person laugh to win, but Nagisa tells him this is not that. You just have to look in the other person's eyes and whoever looks away first loses. He is looking her in the eyes directly but cannot keep up. She won and is thinking of what should she make him do. This was not the deal but she thought of it just now. She has an idea. She wants MC to say her good morning first tomorrow. That's it. MC is confused with this simple request, but he is okay with it. Nagisa cannot wait for tomorrow now. A little later, MC is looking outside the window, enjoying the view of the sky when two students rub the chalk dusters together right next to MC's windows to see if they have been properly cleaned or not. They pat them together and the dust chalk falls on MC in the next window. His view is disrupted just because those two didn't notice him standing there. They apologize for this but MC is cool. At least those students were not a bully like I was expecting. He goes to wash it off and has gotten most of it. He wants to see if he got all of it, but he doesn't care because he knows no one even looks at him, so it wouldn't matter. But Nagisa comes up to him and tells him that he still has some left on his hair. He asks about it, but Nagisa wants to get it for him. She gets close to him and MC is stuck in place because of how close she is to him. She gets the chalk dust off his hair and notices how thicker they are. She compliments his hair and compares it with hers. Now she wants MC to touch her hair and see if she is right about her hair or not. Why can't this girl just straight up ask him out? He is hesitant but extends his arm to touch her hair when Nagisa tells him to. Holding her hair in his hands, Nagisa feels butterflies in her stomach. He lets her hair go and tells her that hers are sure different. She then asks MC about what kinds of hairstyles he likes on girls. Listing all different kinds of hairstyles, she asks if these ever suit her. MC thinks he likes what suits her and this is the reason Nagisa is toying with her. She wants to know how he likes them. She asks of all the styles which one suits her the most. He doesn't clearly answer her question but tells her that ponytails mostly suit girls. Saying this, he leaves saying he is going to check if there is any more dust on his hair or not. Nagisa is left thinking that maybe she will do ponytail style tomorrow. In the next class, the teacher tells everyone that their physical exam is going to be tomorrow so they should be prepared. MC wonders if he has gotten taller or not when Nagisa comes up to him. She is staring at him, which gives off that she is going to tell him that he hasn't gotten any taller but Nagisa asks if he has gotten taller. This freaks him out because no one has ever noticed him. And that is why no one can seem to tell if he has gotten taller or not because no one knows how he looked before. Nagisa has a plan. She takes MC to the stairs and tells him that they should compare heights. There is no one around and this is a perfect playground for Nagisa with MC. MC genuinely wonders if he is taller than her or not. But there is only one way to find out. She tells him to not slouch because it decreases height a little bit. Then she wants him to stand against the wall and point his height with a ruler. She is completely dominating him and he cannot do anything. He knows she is toying with him, but he knows he wouldn't be able to do anything. She wants MC to keep his chin up and face forward so she can take the right measurement. After taking his measurement, Nagisa asks him to switch places keeping the ruler where it is so they can compare it correctly. Nagisa takes MC's spot and MC is now holding the ruler above Nagisa's head. He cannot just stop staring at her. Getting back his senses, he gets back and tries to run away when Nagisa grabs him. She knew he would run. This girl can read MC like a textbook. 
she lets him go and he bolts out of there, as she expected. He accidentally took her ruler with him, but he will surely give her back tomorrow. Nagisa is left with somewhat strong feelings. They were closer than she thought they would be, and it is making her emotions go wild. The next day, Nagisa reaches school and sees MC is not at the bench like usual. She is first and sits on the bench. MC shows up and tells her good morning. But Nagisa had forgotten about the staring contest. MC returns her ruler and takes off. Nagisa is grinning and her friends ask her about it, but she doesn't tell them the real reason. MC is sitting in his tracksuit in the class and it feels very different. His tracksuit was a little baggy last year, but it is much more fitting now. Nagisa comes up to him and tells him exactly what he is thinking which scares him again. She thinks of him like a scared little kid that she is babysitting. But with a little bit, or I should say, full dose of romance. Out of nowhere, Nagisa wants to check out his jacket and complete the comparison from yesterday. MC doesn't want to do it but agrees. Giving her his jacket, Nagisa is clearly smaller than him and the jacket is very baggy on her body. She sits on the chair with his jacket on, admitting that he is taller. MC looks away for a second and looks back only to see Nagisa out of the class, telling him to hurry up as the exams are about to start. He asks her to give the jacket back, but she goes away saying she is borrowing it for a bit. After the exam, everyone got their results and Nagisa is not taller than last year. Her friend wants to control her weight telling her that she wishes she was like Nagisa who can eat whatever and not gain weight. Nagisa isn't worried about her weight but wants to put on fat in certain areas. She definitely wants her melons to get bigger. Her friend notices that her jacket is a lot bigger but Nagisa avoids any questions saying it is her sister's. So MC did get taller but not Nagisa and her friends. At home, Hina gets up and comes down to the living room only to see Nagisa going through her magazine. She is embarrassed but Akina assures her it is okay as she is already in the second year. On the other hand, MC is hiding behind a pole watching someone when Akina comes behind her. She scares him a bit but apologizes for the picnic. Asking about what he is doing here, MC explains he is watching Sita as it is his first errand alone today. She knows this feeling and remembers when Nagisa went on her first errand. Sita is doing great and MC and Akina are walking behind him, watching him. He gets the eggs from the store and takes them home. MC and Akina are waiting for him outside the house. He is very happy that he has done his first errand with perfection. Akina goes and gives Sita a hug. This reminds her again about Nagisa when she was doing her first errand. She was also taking eggs but fell and broke almost all of them. She got home crying and thought she did awful when Akina started stroking her head. This got her to stop crying. Akina tells MC that she loves it when someone strokes her head and he should give it a shot if he gets the chance. Actually, she is expecting him to do this. This is a big responsibility for him, which he thinks he cannot do, but Akina has trust in him. Getting home, Nagisa is in the living room when Akina tells her about Seda's first errand today. She starts to talk about her first errand and how she broke the eggs on the way back, but Nagisa is not like before now and can handle herself pretty well. Akina starts stroking her hair to make her feel good when she tells her that maybe she would like it much better when her crush does this to her. Where are these kinds of siblings, man? She is doing much more for her than she is doing herself. Nagisa is left wondering about MC when Akina notices that she is thinking about someone. She surely knows it is MC but wants to hear it from Nagisa. At last, the time MC was waiting for is here. The manga he likes so much is finally getting a movie adaptation and he cannot wait to see it. He is focused on his phone and looking at the news with so much concentration that he cannot notice Nagisa in front of him. He is startled after finally noticing him. She feels like he is in a very good mood today. Explaining the news of the movie, Nagisa asks if this is the same manga he learned her the other day, because she really loved it and got all the collections. This catches him off guard because he thought she would never like it. She asks if he is going to watch it with someone else, but he is not. He plans on going alone when Nagisa asks if they can both see it together. Once again, MC is startled at her request, but he has to accept it. The day of the move is finally here and MC is waiting for Nagisa to show up. She finally comes and is looking phenomenal. She did the ponytails like she thought of doing today and asked MC if it looked good. He wants to say a lot of stuff but gets only a small compliment. They are on the train and MC is standing, holding the strap but notices that Nagisa is struggling to stand still. There are a lot of people and even more are going to get in at the next station. He asks if she wants to hold the strap but she just grabs his bag and is okay with just that. 
The next station is here and still one more station left to go. The doors open and a huge wave of people get on the train pushing MC and Nagisa against the window. Nagisa is against the window with MC right in front of her in a weird position. He is almost on her but is trying his best not to touch her. He sure is a gentleman. He is constantly getting bumped by people behind him and it's getting very hard for him to stay like this. But he is managing to stay right here so he does not touch her. Nagisa notices this and wonders why is everyone bumping into him like crazy. He explains this always happens because no one notices him until they bump into him. Missy is not fine at all standing in this strange position, but only one station left to go. They finally made it but MC's legs are dying. They are walking to the theater when three dudes surround Nagisa trying to hit on her. They are scaring her a lot but there is nothing MC can do. He thinks to himself that this is the point where the main guy comes and says, did I keep you waiting? But there is no point in saying this as he is already here. He finally comes in front of the dudes and they are scared. They genuinely didn't notice him and asked if these two were going out. MC doesn't know what to say when Nagisa grabs his arm, telling him that he is her boyfriend. Three dudes take off saying they are rooting for MC. Wow, what a wholesome moment that turned into all of a sudden. At the theater, they are trying to see if there are any seats left together but there are not. Every seat is a single one and MC sees they have to wait for the 4 o'clock show to sit next to each other. He feels like they should watch this one as it will get late if they go for the next one. Nagisa feels differently and feels like the next one is the best as the whole point of watching this movie was to sit together. Besides, this means she gets to hang out with him longer. She also feels like he can walk her home, but that was already MC's plan. Nagisa wants to go to all the places they can before the next show and asks where he wants to go now but MC doesn't have a clue about any place. She wants to go to the cafe first, but MC reminds her to buy the tickets first this time. At the cafe, they see a couple having a drink with heart straws. Seeing them is so romantic for Nagisa. She wants to get one for her and MC too, but MC refuses. They look at the menu and decide what they want to get when Nagisa asks MC about it. After a bit of thinking, MC feels like getting a coffee. This shocks Nagisa a lot. She thinks of MC as an adult now as coffee is supposed to be something grown-ups drink. She remembers her sister telling her that coffee can mess up your sleep a lot. MC asks if she ever had coffee or not. She hasn't. So MC starts to suggest some juices saying these are up her alley if she never had coffee. This makes her very mad because she wants to do everything MC does. She thinks if he can drink it, she can too. Well, you are in for a surprise. Ordering two coffees, Nagisa is waiting anxiously for it. She never had one so it is very exciting for her. The coffee is here. NC asks if she wants sugar and creamer with it or not, but she wants to get it as he does. MC drinks it black so it is the same for her. She sips the coffee and lightning strikes through her brain. She had never felt this kind of shock before. She thought it was going to be something like tea, but it is very bitter as she tells NC. She takes MC's cup and drinks from it too thinking his cup is not that bitter but it is. She is surprised to see he can drink stuff like this. MC asks again if she wants to have sugar and creamer with it or not but she is still on the thing. She wants to drink it like this no matter what. She feels like they came together and should do everything the same. But MC gets up anyway and goes to get some sugar and cream. Getting back, he tells her that he was also bitter today and thought of getting it with sugar and cream today. So both of them add the sugar and cream. Nagisa can finally drink it like this. MC doesn't like his coffee like this because he has a habit of getting it black, but drinks it just for her. Finishing the coffee, they go to a toy store where MC is trying to win a prize from a toy machine. Nadisa asks about it when MC explains that he was here with his little brother trying to get him the toy he wanted, but there was no luck. He is trying that once again, but still, it is not happening. Nagisa tries it because she is fairly lucky with these things and gets the toy Sita wants. She gives it to MC which he accepts hesitantly. After that, they are looking at random stuff when MC stops to look at Erizers. He thinks she never have enough of them and is about to get one when Nagisa asks if he likes any design. But he is okay with whatever is usual so Nagisa takes a bunny and hands it to him. However, Nagisa remembers that they have to catch the movie and there is little time left in it. So they run to the theater. The movie starts and Nagisa sees MC being so concentrated on the movie. His facial expressions are changing very much which is very rare for him. She loves this sight as you don't get to see this every day. After the movie, Nagisa and MC are chatting about the movie when she tells him about his facial expressions. 
she thinks his facial expression was changing a lot today and she loved it. MC explains that he has always been careful not to smile in places like school because it seems very eerie. Already people don't talk to him, so seeing him smile makes it even harder for them to talk to him. He has always been this way since elementary school. Nagisa is listening to him with full attention but MC wants to go home now. They get home and MC walks her home. Outside the house, Nagisa thanks him for the day and asks what he thinks about their time together. He thought it was fun. Hearing this, Nagisa gets really happy and asks if they can go out again like this because it was very fun for her as well. He is okay with it? And she wants him to pinky promise. Saying goodbye, MC walks home. On the way, he thinks about what Nagisa said. Like she said, he is too easy to read. He wonders if pretty easy to read is actually easy. We see MC remembering what happened with Nagisa while he tries to sleep. She's asking if she can go out with him again and makes that promise. The thought isn't leaving his mind. The next day, Mick wakes up and goes through the same morning as every day. He eats breakfast with his family and goes to school. While he's looking out the window, Nagisa comes up to him saying good morning. Nagisa asks if he believes in horoscopes and psychological tests. MC feels like you have to take them with a grain of salt. Nagisa actually saw psychological tests yesterday on the TV and was pretty into them. She feels like they are true and can actually tell you about your personality. Since he didn't see it on the TV, Nagisa wants to do some tests on him. Well, this should be good. She asks if she is going to shout in the dream. What is he shouting? Get this girl out of the school. NC doesn't understand the question but still tries to answer it. He believes he is going to shout something like Yaku if he has to. Nagisa confirms it even if he is in an extreme situation like a bear chasing him, still, he would shout that. His answer is yes, and it makes her laugh so much. Moving on to the next question, she asks if he sees flowers blooming, how many does he see? MC thinks of only one. Asking what his answer means, Nagisa tells him that this is the number of people you are going to date in your lifetime. MC wonders if he should be happy or sad. Because if this is true, at least he gets to date someone, but if he somehow lets them get away, he is never going to have a relationship again. Nagisa wants to move on and do some psychological tests together. MC looks up some tests and finds a good one. He asks there are kittens playing in the room, how many do you imagine? MC thinks of two while Nagisa thinks of a candle of kittens. She likes to have so many cats because she loves them. Looking at the answer, MC and Nagisa are stunned to know that this is the number of kids you are going to have. Well, that serves you right. MC and Nagisa don't know how to react to this and just are silent. Nagisa breaks the silence saying that the answers can change depending on when you answer them. MC agrees with her and takes a breather. Nagisa looks at the clock and makes an excuse saying she has to go home early today and leaves. MC is left alone ready to head home as well but is clearly thinking about something. We see Nagisa thinking to herself how shameless that answer was. Well, who told you to start experimenting with psychological questions? At home, Akina is making herself some coffee when Nagisa comes up to her asking to have some as well. Akina refuses telling her she is still too young to drink coffee, but Nagisa has something to tell her. She shared how she drank coffee the other day despite her and her friends telling her not to. She drank a whole cup empty. Akina is surprised to know this and now wants to know when and how she drinks it. Nagisa told her it was that day when she went out and got home at night. Akina remembers how that was the day Nagisa was acting very differently. That was the day she was sweating trying to figure out what to wear. She tried to make a ponytail again and again, but wasn't getting it right, so she asked to help her out which made her very happy. She would normally say that she could do it by herself, but that day she got some help and was happy about it. Akina made her the prettiest ponytail and she loved it. Nagisa was hesitating when she asked her about her outfit. She wanted to know if she wasn't looking weird or anything else when Akina assured her that she was the prettiest of all. Akina remembers and thinks to herself how Nagisa is getting to be more and more private. This is bugging her a lot because it was not too long ago when she used to follow her around everywhere and imitate her all the time. Nagisa assures Akina that she is imitating her trying to drink coffee. She is just becoming more and more like her now she thinks about it. She makes Akina happy. Nagisa steals her coffee cup and runs to her room. The next day in the classroom, MC is sitting alone and we get to know that today is his birthday. When you ask a person about his birthday in April, it has most likely passed, but not in his case because no one has ever asked him about his birthday. He feels like a protagonist of the story today. 
thinking if he is going to get cake at home, his tummy growls like a wild bear. The whole class can hear it and everyone notices him at once. Nagisa is smiling seeing that MC is finally noticed by a lot of people at once. She gives him chocolate because he is hungry. He takes it and looks at it. He sees a note that says happy birthday. He is surprised that she even knows when his birthday is. Nagisa saw it on his ID that day when he lost it. He thanks her but isn't eating it. She gives him another one with another note on it that says to look inside his desk. He looks inside the desk and sees a gift wrapped in paper. Asking if he can open it now, he opens it to see that it is a cute figure type thing. Nagisa is expecting a reaction but MC isn't giving one which worries her. She thinks maybe it is too cute for a boy but MC speaks up saying that it is perfect and he is going to take good care of it. Nagisa takes the chocolate and stuffs it in his mouth saying that he is going to get a gift again next year. MC asks about her birthday and it is August 2nd. He tells her to keep her expectations low but should expect some type of gift as well. MC throws his head on the table overwhelmed because no one has ever done this kind of thing for him, let alone wish him a happy birthday. Give this boy some more good friends like Nagisa Jude. A little after, MC is going to go home and says goodbye to Nagisa. He is leading the class when teachers come and asking for MC, but he doesn't notice him. He walks right by Sudo when Sudo asks someone if MC came in today or not. We see that he is so easy to get by unnoticed. This is normal for him, but what is not normal for him is that Nagisa can spot him so easily. He remembers how she is the one always coming up to him to talk and whatnot. What is it about her that she can notice him so easily? As we see him thinking about this, Nagisa is looking out the window. She sees him standing there and remembers the first time she got to know about him. It was her friend's yearbook where his photo was edited even though he was already in it. She asked her about it when she explained that MC is kind of invisible and no one ever notices him. She was in his class for three years and never knew he was there. This makes Nagisa very curious about him. They got to be in the same class in high school. Nagisa is standing with her friend thinking how lucky they are to be in the same room when she notices MC sitting alone at his table. Asking about him, her friend once again didn't notice him, but Nagisa did. She finds him pretty easy to be noticed, but somehow everyone else finds it pretty hard. Seeing MC go unnoticed time after time, Nagisa is pretty curious about him and wants to talk to him. It was the day their seats were changing and Nagisa thought to herself that she wanted to be right next to MC so she could talk to him. And her number came and she got lucky. Her seat was right next to MC and she wasn't expecting this at all. She goes to sit in her seat and knows it is not going to be weird if she strikes up a conversation. She tells MC it is nice to meet him when MC gets scared all of a sudden. He doesn't believe Nagisa is talking to him and says it back with a cracking voice. He finds it hard to believe that someone actually noticed him and talked to him intentionally because this never happened before. Nagisa sees that he is still shaking because she talked to him. She wants to say good morning the next day to see what kind of reaction he gives her. This was her first interaction with MC and Nagisa is thinking about all of this as she is looking at MC out the window. MC turns back to see Nagisa in the window. Nagisa feels like she isn't going to take her eyes off him anytime soon it seems. I wanted to see them get together happily. This is not fair. 